Over 8 million cases were filed in Texas municipal courts in a recent year. There were over 1 million bench trials. A tremendous number of the defendants in these cases appeared pro se. Under our adversary system, the judge's role is to referee between two presumptively matched sides. Two practical considerations challenge this well-known model in municipal court. First, most defendants are not represented by counsel and appear pro se. Second, most defendants enter a plea of guilty before the court in an ex parte proceeding allowed by Article 27.14, Code of Criminal Procedure. In this instance, the state of Texas represented by the municipal prosecutor does not appear, and the court proceeds with the often unrepresented defendant alone. This creates special risk for municipal judges. They must be very vigilant in protecting the defendant's rights. Without counsel, the defendant receives no competent representation, legal advice, and may not have any idea of his or her rights, obligations, and options. Yet the judge remains the judge and must never take the role of advocate or advisor to a pro se defendant. Here is how this judge makes it clear. I am going to explain some court procedures that you must follow, but I want to make it clear that I will not suggest any particular course of action, nor will I advise as to a strategy on how to proceed. The court can and often must provide the pro se defendant with legal options and information. The court, however, violates the obligation to remain neutral when the judge starts recommending or suggesting alternatives or strategies. Many judges send pro se defendants to discuss their cases with the prosecutor. Judges should make certain that defendants understand the prosecutor's role and make sure defendants understand their Fifth Amendment right to refuse to speak with law enforcement, including the prosecutor. Before we begin, I want to introduce the municipal prosecutor. He represents the state of Texas in this court. It is his responsibility to prosecute the case against you. You may discuss your case with him, or you may choose to remain silent and not do so. Remember that he does not represent you, nor can he give you legal advice. What you say to the prosecutor might be used against you later. The Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution guarantees the right to counsel in all criminal cases. The defendant may, of course, waive this right. The right to self-representation is even constitutionally protected. Neither the U.S. nor the Texas Constitution requires appointment of counsel to indigent defendants in fine-only misdemeanor cases, but all criminal defendants have a right to retain and be represented by counsel. While the cost of legal services may cause many defendants not to hire counsel, all criminal defendants should be encouraged to seek legal representation and advice and be provided an opportunity to do so. Pro se defendants pose the greatest problems during jury trials. The pro se defendant must question the panel, exercise strikes, make opening and closing statements, examine witnesses, and make or respond to objections under the same standards that apply to attorneys. The procedures at trial and rules of evidence are identical for self-represented defendants and defense counsel. Not only must the judge be neutral, but must appear to the jury to neither favor nor disfavor either the attorney prosecutor or the untrained defendant. This can be very difficult. The court should do as much explaining, instructing, and correcting as possible outside of the presence of the jury. Pretrial conferences are also very helpful in preparing the defendant for trial and resolving issues that should not come before the jury. During the upcoming trial, you must follow procedures as set forth in the law. The trial will begin with jury selection. I will question the jury as to their legal qualifications. You may make legal objections to the panel or any individual juror. You will be able to question the panel, object to the prosecutor's questioning of the panel, and challenge jurors for cause. You may exercise three preemptory strikes. That is, you may strike three jurors for any or no reason. You are not required to call witnesses, nor are you required to testify. The burden of proof stays on the state. If you do not testify, the prosecutor may not comment on it, and the jury will be instructed that they may not consider your decision not to testify against you in any way. If you call witnesses or testify, the prosecutor is entitled to cross-examine. I will charge the jury with the law applicable in your case. You will have an opportunity to object to the charge and request submissions before the jury hears the charge. Each side may present closing arguments. The state goes first and last, but each side has equal time. I suggest you study the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure and the Texas Rules of Evidence and consult with an attorney if you have questions. 
During bench trials, the court must be careful to remain neutral, but the issue of unintentionally influencing the jury is not absent. The challenge is balancing neutrality and order against the defendant's right to have a meaningful opportunity to be heard. The first time the court will encounter a pro se defendant is during initial appearance. This stage is often inaccurately called arraignment. That process is specifically regarded in district and county criminal courts, but not municipal courts. The main purpose of the initial appearance is for the court to request and the defendant to enter a plea. There are three available pleas, not guilty. Guilty or no contest, also known as nolo contendere. The court should also give a number of admonishments to the defendant, allow knowing waiver of many of the defendant's rights, and make certain that a plea is voluntarily and knowingly made. Admonitions, often referred to as warnings, are often made to all the defendants that appear at one time before the court. This group is often referred to as the appearance docket. Some admonishments are made concerning particular charges or defendants and made individually. Let's watch Judge Dye give general admonishments to an appearance docket. All rise. Municipal Court, Texasville, Texas is now in session. The Honorable Judge Dye presiding. Please be seated. My name is Judge Dye. I am the presiding judge of Texasville Municipal Court. You are here because you have been issued a citation or have had a complaint filed against you in the court or both. This proceeding is called an initial appearance. The main purpose of this time is for you to enter a plea. I may not discuss the facts of the case with you until a plea is entered. You will be asked to make one of three pleas. The first option is not guilty. This means you want to contest your charge and require the state prove the charges against you. You are entitled to have the case tried before a jury or may waive a jury trial and have the case tried before me as the judge. If you plead not guilty, I will reset your case for a jury or bench trial at a later time. The second option is guilty. If you plead guilty, you admit you committed the offense as charged in the citation or complaint. If you plead guilty, I will find you guilty. Your plea is all the evidence needed to establish your guilt. You may then discuss with me an appropriate punishment and disposition of the case. The last option is a plea of no contest. This is not an admission of guilt, but means you do not contest the offense as charged in the complaint or citation. If you plead no contest, I will find you guilty, and again, you may then discuss disposition of the case. I am going to tell you about important rights that you have in this court. You need to listen carefully. First, the U.S. and Texas Constitution guarantee any individual charged with a crime, as all of you here are, a right to be represented by an attorney and to consult with an attorney. Since the offenses all of you are charged with are not punishable with incarceration, you do not have the right to a court-appointed attorney, but you do have the right to hire one. If you wish to waive the right to counsel, you need to know that if you contest your case, you will be held to the same standards in court as an attorney. An attorney could give advice about your legal options, the consequences of a conviction, evaluate the evidence and complaint in your case, negotiate with the prosecutor, file and argue motions, investigate your case, and try your case before the court or jury. I will ask you later if you wish to proceed without an attorney. If you answer in the affirmative, you waive this important right. If you wish to exercise this right, please enter a plea of not guilty, and I will reset your case so that you may consult with an attorney or hire one. In every court in the nation, including this one, a criminal defendant is presumed innocent. Before any defendant can be convicted, the state of Texas must prove the charge beyond a reasonable doubt. The state must meet this burden of proof if you contest your case. You have a right under the Texas Constitution to have a jury of six persons determine your guilt or innocence. Texas law also allows you to choose either the jury or a court to determine your punishment should the jury find you guilty. If you want to waive the right to a jury trial, you may do so and have a trial before me. If you plead not guilty, I will ask if you want a jury trial or if you wish to waive a jury and have the case tried before me in what we call a bench trial. Finally, most of you are here on a citation. You have the right to a sworn complaint filed in your case describing the offense you committed. If you plead guilty or no contest, you waive that right. If you wish to have a complaint filed in your case, you need to plead not guilty at this time. Remember, some admonishments relate to specific cases or juvenile offenders. 
The court does not have a general right to dismiss cases. That right is reserved to the prosecutor that brings that criminal action on behalf of the state of Texas. There are some exceptions. The Texas Transportation Code gives the court authority to dismiss with a $10 fee when the defendant remedies three particular offenses. If you are charged with expired registration, expired inspection, or expired driver's license, you may be able to have your case dismissed if you have corrected the matter and pay a $10 fee. Likewise, certain productive offenses may be dismissed on presentation of proof of compliance at the time of the offense. If you are charged with failure to maintain proof of financial responsibility, also called no insurance, or failure to display a driver's license, you may have your case dismissed if you can provide satisfactory proof that you had insurance or a driver's license on the date of the citation. The court may want to let pro se defendants know how they can present these remedial and documentary proofs to the court. If you want to exercise any of these options, I will redirect you to the clerk before you approach the court. Article 